All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at ATI Bulldog Bullpup style a shotgun. We're going to take a very close look at the shotgun. Um, and uh, I will show you how to disassemble it and assemble it, the whole thing. Now, the first thing when you open up, you're going to get your manual. And here we go, the beauty, the new just came out. I did saw it on uh, 2020 uh, SHOT Show. But honestly, I wasn't really thrilled about it. It kind of grew up on me. I uh, decided to get this type of shotgun. I, f I felt it's really cool to have this type of shotgun. I was kind of started interested about it. So I pulled the trigger and I decided to order, especially when it went on sale at a classic firearm for 450 bucks. So right here on the side, we have uh, just the sights two sides there's nothing special about them they are just plastic they're polymer i already installed them for the video for the intro um they're slightly um was loose to be honest uh, but i had to tie the heck out of them they were still kind of wiggling a little, a little bit now um you have a front sight you have a rear sight uh, they're all adjustable you have a peephole and the fork style here on the rear side uh, very super light I actually like it they seems to be very durable um, it's good thing that there are pretty light because the shotgun is actually kind of very heavy I was a little bit disappointed but we're gonna talk about this um, in a minute so we have chokes comes with uh, three chokes one is already pre-installed I guess it's just open choke and we have two more just two more chokes um, and the special tool to remove these uh, type of chokes. Box is actually really flimsy, really cheap, but you know it is what it is. Not a big deal. Uh, I doubt it. You're gonna be taking this particular shotgun on um, hunting, so I doubt it. You ever going to use these chokes? And comes with one the magazine. Unfortunately, only comes with mag magazine. I did order the magazine for 10 round magazine. It's coming to me. Um, I will show you how it works, if it fit right, and I'll kind of play around with it and see uh, if it's a very great option. Because there are actually a couple of more magazines out there on the market existed that you can use with this uh, particular shotgun. Now this package was also sealed, I just had to open up so I can play with it. Right, there you go, this is just the magazine, 5 round magazine with this cool... Um, idea where that you can mount your magazine to the front um, and use it as an extra hand grip not really thrilled uh, about it I had some problems with it we're gonna talk about this in a minute but right here we have our magazine and in the last pocket right here we just have um, just the tool this type of tool let me show real quick it's for disassembling. We're gonna um, take a look at it in a minute, and just your regular Allen wrench key that I'm pretty sure everybody have. Kind of waste of money for them to put in this. I wish it was uh, extra magazine. Okay, and our shotgun. Now our shotgun is currently unloaded, as you see, because there is a little flagger right here, and this is how our shotgun look like let me go ahead and uh take this box away and uh, we're gonna take a closer look all right before i go any further let me go ahead and install um, the sights on it because honestly it doesn't really look good without sights at all All right, they're not perfect. I just kind of threw them there. Uh, they're not even tight enough. That's fine. Let me go ahead and get rid of this thing. And um, obviously this is unloaded. We have a flicker here. And here we go. Our ATI Bulldog Ball Pop Shotgun. Very cool. I think it's so, very cool, especially for $450, uh, you cannot uh, pass the deal. Okay, so <clears throat> this is supposed to be 
AR-15 style, okay? Um, honestly, I wouldn't take it like this. Um, there is a couple of things here that doesn't match um, AR-15 at all. Obviously, the trigger here, it's not AR-15 at all. We're going to take a look inside in a minute, and I'll show you how it is. We have um, our takedown pins. There are a total of three takedown pins, one, two, three. Right here, they are enlarged. They're not the same size than you would find this on the R15. Um, the bolt release right here, the bolt release is enlarged. It's not nothing that you will find on your regular R15. The mag release as well, it's actually way longer. I did look into it. I'm gonna um, tell you in a minute the problem with this magazine uh, release. But I found it seems like AR-10 have this type of magazine release. So I'm, I'm assuming these parts was used from AR-10. Unfortunately, I never had AR-10 on hands. Um, so I can kind of match it to see if this is what was used. The charging handle. Charging handle, we have an uh, ambidextrous charging handle that for you to pull the charging handle, you actually have to press on both sides at the same time. The charging handle doesn't have a cut out from the inside like you will find on your regular um, AR-15 charging handle, but this is basically how it looks. We have here one sling mount, unfortunately one sling mount, I'm not sure why they didn't put any sling mount here at all at the front, so I guess you can you have to kind of figure yourself. So one sling mount in the back, it is what it is. Now we have a chick riser, okay? Uh, chick riser is adjustable. This is how I adjust, adjust right here. You just untie this and you can slide it a little bit up. Now don't be uh, excited about this chick riser because um, it kind of look cool. It is useful, but unfortunately you only have two adjustments for um, the chick rise. Um, the one that you have is basically will be the lowest option and the second option is only five millimeter higher yes so you only have two adjustments on your chick rise that's it now the magazine release magazine release is on this side is gonna be on your right hand side and uh, it's extremely uncomfortable let me go ahead and put the magazine in there. Here we go, magazine slides right in. And for you to remove the magazine, you obviously have to do it on this side only. This is how you release your magazine. I looked into it and I'm going to have to modify it, this with ambidextrous magazine release for AR-15. I have to do some adjustments, uh, but I really do not like the fact that the magazine release located on opposite side. It's extremely uncomfortable. If you wanted to do, if you want to perform any tactical reload, this is will never going to work for tactical reload. Believe me, unless you are left-handed, that then might going to work. Not for the right handy at all. Now the bolt release. Bolt release works just fine, just like your on your regular AR-15. Uh, it holds the bolt on the last round. Um, let me see. Let me. This is how it holds up, and you have your AR-15 type charging handle. And if you press on uh, bolt release your ball just come back just like that you have a pretty nice soft uh, butt pad that is about uh, it's three quarters it kind of looks like it's inch but it's only three quarters but it's pretty soft and hopefully um, with uh, semi-automatic um, it will be really light on a recoil now at the front we have this uh, cage that I really like it um, I'm going to take this off so you can kind of, kind of see 
It's really cool to have something like this. Uh, it protects you from accidentally touching your barrel, but it is add, add an extra weight to already pretty heavy a shotgun. Will I'm going to use it or not? Probably will. Now you see me taking this off extremely easy. Believe me, I have to tie that thing in my vise to get it off. It was extremely tight. It should be never, never tight that much. Uh, because you have to remove all this for you to take this weapon apart and really clean it. Really, really clean it good. You have to take this off. And it was really, really hard to remove. But I established it without absolutely no damaging. Now, the hand grip. Um, your uh, hand grip, it's not removable, unfortunately. Not like on Panzer BP-12 where you can change your um, hand grip to any AR style uh, hand grip. But um, it is okay grip because this is more of a, like a straight grip. Let me kind of um, show it to you what I'm talking about. I have just mil spec AR-15 hand grip. And I just kind of want you to imagine if you have AR-15 hand grip sitting there straight and installed. This is how far your mil spec hand grip will be. Almost close to your a magazine. Okay, I'm going to put here in the back so this is how it's going to be looking if you have a regular mil spec AR-15 hand grip but this is not this is your basically straight um, AR-15 top kind of mag poolish uh, style um, hand grip it is pretty comfortable um, fortunately it does not have anything there for you to store um, I don't know batteries, maybe a little Allen wrench key or something like that. There's nothing in there. Now, uh, before I'm gonna take this down, um, this is your safety switch. Uh, basically, you have to press it right here. And if you want to release uh, your safety, you use uh, your one finger uh, to release it. But if you want to engage your safety, you have to basically use your other hand. I wish they had something uh, like AR-15 have, just the AR-15 style switch, but they're not. They do have it on Panzer uh, BP-12, but I just did not get this type of shotgun. I was excited about this particular shotgun because it just came out. Um, I did watch 2020 uh, SHOT Show. I have seen it, but I, like I said, I, I wasn't really thrilled about it. Um, it just kind of grow into me to get it and I just pulled the trigger because how cheap it was now this particular shotgun looks exactly like shotgun made by Anatolian defense that is also based in Turkey the only difference between these shotguns is uh, this particular one doesn't have M lock um, drilled right here so there's only basically the difference I did call uh, American tactical and they told me this shotgun made in parse I did a little bit of research and uh, I couldn't find anything about parse at Turkey absolutely nothing who made these shotguns for ATI I have no idea if you know please put this in the comment section below I looked everywhere I couldn't find any, any anything I did call um, American Tactical and they told me they do not have anything to do with the Anatolian defense and they even told me, kind of been real, you know, a little bit rude, they told me that um, a lot of shotguns look like that. Uh, I don't know. You see a picture right here? It looks freaking exactly the same. Uh, the only difference is that it doesn't have um, M-Lock uh, right here. Now the issue that I had uh, with uh, a magazine, okay, I was kind of excited about the fact that I can use the magazine as the hand grip at the front but um, I haven't worked this in yet I just tried a couple of times I'm pretty sure if um, just simple uh, sending the magazine off right here because this is just the plastic this is plastic this is all plastic the lock right here this is plastic I'm pretty sure if you can just use the filer and file down a little bit right here it will slide in and out super easy um, with me it was super hard to get it on extremely hard I still cannot get it in because I, I told you I haven't worked on it but you 
this is getting stuck and this is when you finally can get it locked when you try to remove it I couldn't even remove it I have to hammer this thing out with my rubber mallet let me try this if I can do it without bringing my no I gotta bring my mallet now I don't want this to be a turn off for you I'm just doing here honest review this is the problem that I have I'm pretty sure this is super easy to fix just with a little filer something uh, like this and you can work uh, your magazine in and out pretty good I'm pretty sure it's not a big deal um, nothing perfect in this life maybe mine is just defective it does work work just fine it just the grooves here need to be worked in and out okay so I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a problem but will I'm going to ever use the magazine here at the front I doubt it because the weight of the shotgun I was actually surprised by the weight of the shotgun the shotgun is freaking heavy and if you have five rounds here you have ten rounds here is gonna turn to 11 pounds if not more than that I'm gonna post uh, exactly um, exact measurement right here right now on the screen after I measure it I'm gonna load the front Mac and the 10 round Mac that I'm hoping to receive soon um, and then will be added in this video as well uh, because I'm making this video as I go now let's go ahead and take this apart uh, fairly easy to do uh, but we're going to take this uh, shotgun completely apart not just the strip field because there is a strip field uh, type of takedown and obviously uh, the full disassemble for cleaning so if you're interested to see this this is a great video for you how it disassembles I already took it apart because I was learning how it works uh, how to take it apart so I can make this video uh, for you guys okay so the first thing you have to remove your cheek riser by the way the cheek riser a knob right here you can move it to either side Does, doesn't matter which side you can switch it. now let's go ahead and take your chick riser off just so I won't lose that and now you have access to these takedown pins still have to use uh, couple of tools because they're still pretty tight you have to work them in to be able to remove easily like on uh, your AR-15 now the good thing about um, these takedown pins uh, that they are have a D10 in all of them so they will not come out and slide and fly everywhere okay so now you're ready to take this apart let me just go ahead and swap this and this is how it disassembles just like that for your gun range strip if uh, something happened shell got stuck and you need to remove or you need to clean right quick while you're at the shooting range so this is your field strip now we're gonna take this further and we're gonna completely disassemble but uh, right now let's go ahead and take a look uh, what's inside here now this is not your uh, typical AR-15 trigger this trigger is extended because uh, your action is all the way in the back of it so you just have a little long extender and so you can release this trigger and you press on the trigger and uh, you have your hammer is located all the way in the back and this is your bolt catch very similar to AR-15 it just much enlarged so this is where your trigger group located right here and that's about it this is all piece, this is all polymer, super light, all weight is located right here. 
So this is technically your lower, just like your, your AR-15. Lower, this is shell deflector. Very nice to have a shell deflector like that, so your rounds will kind of go more of a down, not thrown in your face in case you're shooting this uh, left-handed. So it's nice, you can always remove this uh, by this little uh, screw over there. Your handguard, just handguard right here. And I'm gonna put uh, the weight of just this piece itself uh, on the screen, just so you know everything. With the sights, don't worry about it. The sights is extremely light. It will probably add um, just a little bit. I mean, I'm not even worried about it. Okay, so for you to take this apart and clean really good, like I said, I already did. Um, was it clean inside? No, um, and this is what you expect from uh, any shotguns like this from any firearm. I'm sorry every firearm that you buy you have to clean it And this is what I did. I took it apart. It was it did have some metal uh, shavings there um, Very very tiny ones. It's from machining you you mean it is what it is um, This is not your premium type of shotguns and even I'm pretty sure even the fifteen hundred dollars shotguns like this will have metal shavings in there from machining from factory um, and you have to take it apart, clean it. Uh, I mean, you, you have to do it with every every firearm. Um, this is was uh, not uh, exception, so I took it apart and clean it, just like you have to do with every firearm. So let's go ahead and take it, this thing apart. Um, it's actually pretty uh, similar. Just have to um, follow this uh, manual. And uh, like I said earlier. I had to put this in my vise to take this off. It's extremely hard to take this off as well, removing the, the other knot in there that I will, I will show you in a minute. So for you to take this apart, you just have to remove this guard. Comes off easy. Now you have to remove these bolt right here and you can uh, use Allen wrench that came in the package I guess since they put one in there this is what holds your hand guard And unfortunately, I couldn't find any specification to torque it, how you have to torque it. I just generally tied that down when the first time I was taking it apart. Um, so I don't know, I guess use your hand. Just not over tighten and go crazy with it. So this whole thing slides like that. Okay. And right here, you have this piece that I guess centerize and uh, hold this barrel, but this is basically where it sits. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this on the side. And this is your internal. This is how it cycles, just like that. And for you to remove uh, the charging handle, um, you just have to remove these little two screws and the whole thing will uh, comes out. Now this lucky nut was pretty tough to remove. I also have to put this in the vise. The correct name for this is lucky nut. Now let me see, yeah, we're able to remove this. And like I said, it was super hard. Okay, we're just gonna completely take this off. You have a weird looking O-ring here, I shouldn't use the weird looking, just the regular O-ring. Not sure why the O-ring is here and what it do. I guess it stopped action. I guess that's what it's for. Not quite sure, but don't forget to put this O-ring when you take this apart and put it back together. Okay, take this off. Now right here, you will find your little holes. Um, for your action for your gas so it can escape your barrel now make sure these holes is clean 
Okay, you during the machining, sometimes these holes get clogged and your shotgun never going to cycle uh, like it should. A lot of people buy a new firearm and it's not ever going to cycle correctly because you have some problem with these little holes and you have to clean them really good. Uh, sometimes during the machining, they get clogged with some metal shaving and like I said, your firearm will never going to work like it should. Okay, now you have to use a tool to take down your barrel nut. That's basically what holds your barrel. The tool comes. Just like that. I didn't tie this as hard as I should because I knew I'm going to be taking all this apart. And when you take this off, barrel nut the whole thing can comes apart and now this is your upper right and this is your action right here let me go take this apart you just slide this and you remove your, your bolt okay spring barrel nut right here you have this little spacer here it holds um, this uh, spring but when you install make sure when you install it back um, you have the opening where your spring sits right here not backwards the spring is supposed to sit on this little piece right so you don't forget that there's the barrel nut and right here our bolt okay bolt look like this um, you see right now closer look on this bolt fire pin nothing special to remove fire pin you have to knock out um, the little pin that holds all this together I'm not gonna show this is super simple um, super easy make sure you clean all this you loop all that before you put in all this back together honestly you can just spray the heck out of it with your Remington oil or something like that I like to use this local gun oil extreme duty gun oil this stuff is amazing amazing and uh, this is our barrel looks like this reminds me um, Remington a little bit uh, 870 I have one of these too you also see a close look right now and guys I hope you enjoy my quality of the video I hope you enjoy all the close look so you can really take a good look at this firearm before you purchasing so you kind of know what are you buying and right here this is what says on the the barrel made in turkey 12 gauge 3 inch uh, chamber this is how you take apart this cool shotgun by ati and uh, let's go ahead and uh, put all this back together. I'm just going to speed up the process uh, and not going to go through details how you put all this uh, together. All right, guys. Uh, hopefully, my video helped you to made a right decision to purchase this firearm or not. Um, this firearm requires some work and adjustment to it, but what you expected for four hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, if you want to get something better, you might have to pay uh, eight hundred bucks, uh, or some of these type of firearms go up to fifteen hundred dollars. Um, I wasn't expecting a lot from this type of firearm, from this type of quality. 
uh, for the bug, but I like stuff like that. I like to improve weapons, and for me, this is not a problem at all. A little bit filing here and there, uh, it's not a big deal, and I'm going to make this uh, really, really good. Now, unfortunately, in this video, you're not going to see me going out there and shoot range. I really wanted to do it, but unfortunately, during this uh, epidemic, I cannot go to the shooting range at all. Uh, everything is closed, but please stay tuned, subscribe, like if you like this video. And I'm going to post a whole another uh, video of me shooting this firearm with the different loads. I'm going to test different type of ammo in there see how it performs, uh, what's good to shoot, what's not good to shoot. And stay tuned. Guys, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.